there are certain economic catalysts that if Nigeria gets it right, gets them right, gets each and every one of them right, we will jump in our efforts to join the developed world. One of the most important of such catalysts is energy. We call it power, call it electricity. It's important to drive modern machinery. It's important to even give good life to the citizens. But it seems Nigeria has been finding it very difficult for some time to get, get that aspect right. Regimes have come, regimes have gone, with all the promises to improve on our power generation. All we hear is excuses why it won't be. The most common thing recently has been the incessant breakdown of our national grid. It's like a cat call, you know, before a cat does meow, meow four times in a time without reason, the, 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 the national grid had collapsed as many times as, as, as it has been. We just came out from one. By the way, after listening to this, if you have not been connected, let us know. Let it be interactive. Let us also send the message across. But what has happened so far? From February till now, the national grid had collapsed 10 times. Let me give you the dates. The first one was on the 4th of February. Second one was on 28th of March. Third one was on the 15th of April. On the 16th of July, another one happened. On August 5, it, was, it collapsed, put the whole nation into, into darkness, and they tried to bring it back, and it collapsed. In a sense, it collapsed two times on a single day. That's August 5. On October 14, it collapsed again. Back again on 15, the next day it collapsed. November 5 was just yesterday, it collapsed. Some parts of Nigeria have received back their light. Have you received back your own? Let us hear you if you have not received. But that's not the matter. The matter is, why is it so? Why have we found it difficult to get this thing right and once and for all? Of course, it's on record that Nigeria sells energy to Niger, and to some other neighboring countries. And of course, we also know why. It's not because we have access to sell. The cost of transmitting power from, for, on a long distance, it diminishes in quantity and volume. So I can understand that anybody who understands that would, but that's not even the matter. The matter is that it has become too many, too many. Every now and then, the national grid collapses. And I've given you 10 instances in the course of the year 10 times it has collapsed. Does it mean we can't get this thing right? By the way, what is the cause of this collapse? Now, let me explain to you. There is something that is called stability level in power and grid management. Now, there is a demand factor, there is a supply factor. Now, if Nigeria needs 4,000 megawatts of electricity, or kilowatts of electricity to operate. And Nigeria is demanding 4,200. There's an excess of demand over supply. If Nigeria needs 4,000 kilowatts of electricity and we have demand for 3,800, there is an under demand. Both of them are not good news for the grid. There's a stability level that is allowed. If anything outside the stability level, the the, the grid will collapse. I hope you understand now why it collapses so easily. There is a stability level. Outside the stability level, the grid will collapse, either above or more. Call it, I think the easiest way for you to understand it as a layman is circuit breaker. The moment it's above or below that very stability level, it breaks circuit to protect the system and protect everything. It goes off. That's why it goes off very often. That's an understanding of what happens and why this grid collapses very often. Now, what is the way out? What is the way out? It has been too much. I, we have, by research, found out why other nations are getting it right, including nations that we sold energy to. Why have we not been getting it right? And we prefer solutions that I believe the federal government of Nigeria and the game course and, 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 and this course we get interested in. Number one is they must improve or upgrade their power capacity. We are producing below our need. 
there is need to increase our power, our transform, our power generating power, uh, OPS power. So upgrade and improve our, trans and our transformer capacity. That's the first thing. If, if we have a problem of demand, it's easier to manage. But we have a problem of supply put up with the demand. Our demand for power is far above what we are getting in terms of supply. So there is need to, to generate more. Then we now face the problem of distribution. That's number one. Number two is we must improve on our revenue collection. So much is wasted by these people. Even the effort to meter. Why wouldn't everyone have meter? But not everyone is metered. I still see Nepal people carrying ladder to go and cut wire of people who didn't pay bills. It ought not to be so in this generation. Let everyone have meter. And then improve on your power generation. If you will improve on that, you discover that the money you are losing outside could be used to improve the system. You don't have to. Just people around to pay. Just like I use my, my, my handset. The moment my credit finishes, I don't even talk to MTN. You will not talk to Airtel. No, you cannot talk to Global. global. All you need to do is to go and reload, or you don't look, reload. And that ends it. That's why. So one, they must improve on that. Now, number three is that government should allow states and private individuals to generate power. There are people who have enough money. There are entities and companies that are willing to do it. There is need for enabling environment and enabling law that they should do that. By the time they do it and everybody puts his hand on the deck, we'll be able to generate enough for our use. Of course, number four is deploy modern smart grid that enables data to flow between transformers. That is the main thing. That is the reason. It seems to us that the grid we have is obsolete. There are modern smart grids that transmit demands energy through, not by mechanical means, not by manual means. And if that happens, it will automatically shut and keep at bay both demand and supply. And we won't be having this incessant uh, supply, I mean, incessant breakdown of our system. We, ha we have gone beyond this. Those of you that travel admire when you go to countries and nobody's talking about power. I enjoy it. And you come here, particularly our leaders, you do as if you've forgotten how what you have enjoyed there. What is difficult about doing it? Is it rocket science? Why wouldn't we? And lastly, why would it be that the national grid broke down, collapsed, and the whole nation goes off? The way out is to decentralize the national grid. Decentralize it. Yes, when we are battling a, a state, we are battling. A few weeks ago, the northern part of Nigeria was completely off. It's understandable. In this, in, when you decentralize it, the whole nation will not go blind, blackout at the same time. Decentralize it, it is sad to note that Nigeria on the whole is plunged into darkness on a single swoop. That's the wrong thing to do. So let government decentralize the national grid and let 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 different zones have different grids. Now, presently, Nigeria gets our energy from hydro and from gas, and of course, from solar, mostly individuals and a few other people. But hydro and gas are the main sources. There are other sources of power that are more stable. Why wouldn't we go for nuclear power? for the purpose of industrialization and for energy. Yeah, that's the language. Then we, wherever they are using nuclear energy or power, it's very stable, it hardly goes out. So can't we think of these things futuristically and the federal government of Nigeria should do us a favor by creating an enabling environment for people. There are people who have the wherewithal to go into this area of investment. Once more, our pleasure from Broad Street Radio to throw light to you on this very important thing that has been happening so incessantly. Thank you.